remember your last supper before the pandemic? The last meal you had out at a restaurant with friends? The last meal before fear and anxiety ran the conversation? If you had known it was your last, would you have lingered? Would you have ordered dessert? Would you have held your friends' hands and told them how much you loved them? If you had known, would you have washed their feet? Tonight, we worship together online because this night was the beginning of the end. This night was Jesus' last supper with his disciples. Take a moment to imagine how he must have felt. Tonight we will hear again and again of a love that knows no bounds. May we be fully present in this time. May we worship holy God. The closer and closer we get to the crucifixion, the more earnest our prayers of confession feel. For we know that what was done to Jesus, betrayal, humiliation, violence, and death, are things we do to each other all the time. So with all earnestness, a sense of urgency, and a deep hope for transformation, we return to this prayer once again, trusting that the God who holds the stars in the sky is holding us tonight. Let us confess together. Holy God, who holds us together, if I were to place myself at your table, I would probably be Peter, misunderstanding your radical hospitality sticking to the rules, arguing what I do and don't deserve. Then again, it's possible I'd be Judas, the one who betrayed you, the one who failed to see the good right in front of him, the one who might have thought he wasn't worthy of your love. If I were to place myself at your table, it's possible I would be one of the unnamed disciples, watching, but not speaking, silently missing the opportunity to tell you what I believe and how much I love you. If I were to place myself at your table, I am confident that I would have made the same mistakes your well-intentioned disciples made. There is no surprise there. What is surprising is that I know you would have washed my feet nonetheless. So forgive me, God. Wash not just my feet, but my hands and my head also. Amen. Jesus knew that Peter would deny. He knew that Jesus, G Judas would betray. And he knew the disciples would hide in fear. And still, and still, he invited them in. He washed their feet and he fed them. 
Friends, we worship the living Christ, whose love shocks, surprises, and far exceeds our understanding of love. So may this story tonight remind us, no matter who we are, no matter where we are, no matter where we go, no matter how great our mistakes or regrets are in life, we will always be invited in and held together by the living God. Again and again and again, we are forgiven again and again and again. We are held. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians in the 11th chapter, reading verses 23 through 26. The institution of the Lord's Supper is described here by Paul. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of God for the people of God. I've chosen to call the reflection for tonight until, and Rita will be reading in a few moments, a poem called, um, has that word until in the title as well. It's not a big word, but it is big in meaning, until they share the meal until Jesus comes. Imagine, imagine what that must have been like for them, waiting for the day that Jesus comes. Paul is already in the church and the church is already engaged in celebrating the Lord's Supper. And Paul is giving them instructions about how to go about doing that, to eat the bread and remember him when they break it, and to drink the cup and remember him when they drink it, to give thanks for what they have. But they worship in fear sometimes. And so there are these untills as they hear Paul's word, until he comes again, and they must have been thinking, oh, oh, that he would come again, oh, that he would. For they longed for a day when the oppressors would no longer put fear in their hearts, when they could worship openly and freely, when love was reigning in all of society. A day when Jesus comes again and when they might see again things like the healing of all people. A, a, a time that would be like what is described in Revelation. When there is no more pain and no more crying and no more mourning and no more death. Where every tear is wiped from their eyes. Where they enjoy a grand and glorious banquet until he comes again. Oh, that it was until, 
Oh, that it was now. We know a little bit about until, don't we? A year ago, for this service, we thought it wouldn't last long. And we were holding on to different untils. Until we get it under control, it'll be a few months. Until we have a vaccine. How long will that take? until the vaccine is readily available to everyone, until a certain percentage of the population is vaccinated, until the pandemic is in the rearview mirror. Oh, that that day would come. Oh, that we could worship together physically, but it is until, oh, that love would rule. We long for a day when everyone is safe, regardless of their race or their creed or their culture. We long for a day when someone doesn't have to be blamed falsely, like our Asian American community and when they can be free and safe. We long for a day when everyone, everyone has equal opportunity for health care, and there is no fear. We long for a day when the vision of God's world would come into a reality, where everyone is included, where everyone is safe, where everyone knows they are loved and cared for by God, where everyone knows the power of forgiveness and grace until he comes again. We long for him to come again and we think of how grand it will be. And yet we know the journey. The journey when Jesus stood and broke that bread with his disciples. And said until. But there's little doubt in that until if you see what comes next. It's not if until he comes again. It's not when he might come again. But it is until he comes again. There is assurance and strength and positivity in that. And we have known in these days how God in Jesus Christ, by the power of the Spirit, has come to us in this past year. Present in prayers, present in communications that we share with one another, present in the way that people have helped one another, present in hunger programs, present in all kinds of ways, lifting us up, helping us to get through this. And we know, or we trust, that God is with us until Jesus comes again. Until the world is set right. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for Jesus and for his sharing that last Passover meal with his disciples. For the promises held out in the breaking of the bread, in the pouring of the wine, in washing feet, in the promise of a new covenant, and in the promise of until. For in that until we know that you are coming to us and that you are present with us and that you will always be with us. Be with us 
this night and strengthen us for the journey that lies ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. The following is a poem that was written several months ago by Sarah R., a member of Sanctified Art. Until that day. We cannot shake hands right now. We cannot hug or kiss cheeks. We cannot lean in to tell stories or draw close to pray. We cannot pass the peace or even pass the time in each other's homes. We cannot eat together because the world is sick. So instead of holding each other, we hold distance. We hold mass. We hold statistics on the tips of our tongues. We hold fear. We hold space. We hold tense conversations. Maybe by the time you're reading this, the day will have come for all God's people to be gathered at table. Maybe by the time you're reading this, we will be eating together. Maybe we'll be hugging. Hopefully there will be dancing and laughing and kissing and leaning in to tell stories and throwing our heads back to laugh. But until that day, I will wiggle my toes and think of foot washing. I will eat sweet bread ravenously and remember communion. I will close my eyes and picture your face. I will clasp my hands and know as sure as one palm knows the other that we are being held. We are being held together. Christ gave us the mandate to love one another. Christ gave us the peace that we will never be left alone. Christ gave us the picture that we are connected as vine and branches. Christ gave us the assurance that no one will take away our joy. God is with you. God, God is, is with, with us all. all. Open wide our hearts. We, we open, open them to new possibilities. possibilities. From our dining room tables to our home offices, this is the time to give God our thanks and praise. Our homes may be filled with young voices, or our homes may be filled with overwhelming silence. This table might be brimming with family, or we may be sitting by ourselves at an empty table. But the table is never truly empty. The silence will not be the last sound you hear. Jesus the Christ has created a realm of love for each of us, one in which we will be reunited with loved ones, one in which we are assured of God's comfort. It was a night filled with teachings and memories. Undoubtedly, tears were shed and laughs raised. This was the night before Jesus died. Jesus took bread, as he blessed and broke it, he said to his friends, Whenever you eat this bread, remember me. Later, Jesus blessed a cup filled with the fruit of the vine. Friends, this is the new covenant. Drink this to remember me. Drink to remember our time together. Spirit of God, surround the bread, surround the cup, surround the elements no matter what form they take. 
surround us no matter where we are. Bless us in our eating and drinking. Bless our connection near and far. Even with physical distance between each one of us, our covenant with God will keep us together. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of redemption we have shared in the body and blood of our Savior. As you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your great love for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Passion, as it is told in John chapter 19, verses 17 through 30. And carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it would have written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Today, you shall be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother.
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 